everybody, my name is Born Isaac Barry, and today we will be doing a weather report. So, what is the weather today all across the U.S.? Well, first we'll start with the southern state, which is Hawaii. Now, its capital is Honolulu, which is surprisingly not situated on the island of Hawaii. But anyway, Hawaii just recently faced a huge disaster. Well, not necessarily huge, but a big disaster. There was a tsunami that ravaged the island of Maui, which is right here, and is the second largest island in all of Hawaii. Where did this tsunami come from? Well, it came from the shock wave of a giant volcanic eruption in Tonga, which is a small island in the Pacific. And this eruption let out shock waves all over the world. One of the places that shock waves struck was Maui, Hawaii. Another danger is the bunches of volcanoes that are there. There are a lot of volcanoes in Hawaii and six of them are active. So, be warned of them. However, most of the time, instead of erupting, they're used as sites for national parks to get money. So, now, let's go a bit north. Uh, far to the east and just a bit north. Now, in Florida, things get cold. The weather is over there could set record. Yeah, I'm not kidding. It could set record because of how cold it is. Over here, this could be a record for the first time in four years. It's extremely cold over in Florida and freezing. Right now, it's cloudy. So much for the sunshine state. So now, weather in the south generally is very gloomy. In places, like Ar in places like Arkansas and Tennessee, there have also been warnings of storms. In Texas, in parts of Oklahoma and New Mexico, there have also been warnings of gales. And these gales are basically like large things of wind. In California, there are sections where it's very dangerous to be on a beach. And any surfers might be in danger as well. In North California, in Northern California, in much of Eastern Oregon and Washington, there is a bunch of air pollution and stagnation. And this is caused by many things like cars, factories, um, blah, 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 blah. And so, this pollution could potentially cause air stagnation. Now, there have been warnings of storms in Pennsylvania as well. These winter storms could potentially cause blizzards. The governor himself is saying to stay away from a certain area in central Pennsylvania, where there could be severe blizzards and winter storms. And these winter storms could mean really bad things. If it's absolutely, absolutely necessary, and you want to take the risk for something that you really need, then make sure to bring bunches of supplies with you. Now in New England, things are fairly okay. However, there is a winter storm. I know, a bunch of winter storms, right? There could be a winter storm over here as well in parts of coastal Massachusetts and all of Rhode Island. So over here, there is a watch that expires in um, January 3rd. Now in Long Island, there were warnings of gales, which, as I've said, are large winds as well. Now, these are 
the main things that are happening all over the U.S. Oh, and also in Alaska, this is Canada. In Alaska, Central Alaska specifically, there are also a bunch of, you guessed it, Alaska is a cold state, winter storms. Now, why are winter storms so frequent all over the entire U.S.? Well, first, let's tell you how winter storms form. Winter storms can form first when you have moist air. Now, this isn't different from any other storm. Most storms need moist air to form. But the difference is that now when you have that moist air, this is what allows clouds to form from the moisture and have precipitation. But that precipitation is just going to be regular old rain. Something doesn't come in. That thing that has to come in is cold air. Now, it can't be too warm. And it can't be too cold. It has to be just right. And by just right, I don't mean like that just right temperature for you sleeping under your blankets and pillows. I mean below um, zero degrees Celsius. And so, if it's too cold, like for example, the temperatures of Antarctica, then there won't be uh, much moisture able to hold in that air. So there will be no precipitation. That's why in Antarctica, there is very little snow that happens throughout the year. Now, if it's too warm, you get the point. If you have cold air, cold low freezing, but not like Antarctic levels, then that cold air can make all of that precipitation turn into snow. Now, the problem with winter is that they're getting colder problem with summers is that they're getting hotter. And so, why are they getting hot? Well, as I said, pollution. Now, I'm just going to bring up a local example. Now, there was a man who just moved here named Raph and another man named Mr. Bali. Now, this guy, Ref, he didn't really know what a recycling bin is. Where's the other guy? Where's the other contestant? There's supposed to be two guys here, right? An hour late? You're 35 minutes late! I have some uh, things to do. Sorry I'm late. I'm Rifat. I'm from the Bronx. My name is Abuno Isaac and I'm from the Earth. Okay. Here's recyclable. I have to check the containers to see which one is trash. Recycle, that's wrong. Recycle, that's wrong. Trash is very small. In the bronze, everything is trash. Let me fix their mistake. Now everything is trash. That's exactly how the bronze looks like. I moved into the Bronx some 12 years ago. It was 2008. Now I'm going to share with you my first day experience in the Bronx. I still remember drinking a bottle of water and looking for a recycling bin for bin. five hours. Ended up finding it at Lemon College. 
There comes a time when we heed a certain call. When the world must come. Excuse me, can you please help me find a recycle bin? No. Excuse me, can you please help me find a recycle bin? I can't even tell you where recycle bin is. There's no recycle bin in the Bronx, nowhere in sight. You can drive 5 miles here, 10 miles there. Maybe you get lucky, but no recycle bin in the Bronx. Good luck and sorry about that. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. I have been looking for a recycle bin. Can you please help me? The recycling bin is right over there. Thank you very much. Now I'm gonna go outside to see anything has changed 12 years later. Can you tell me where can I find a recycle bin? Um, there are no recycle bins here. I, I have been looking for a recycle bin last half an hour. Not in this area, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. You could probably go in the trash can, but I'll, I'll keep looking for you. Thank you. Bronze has not changed much, but we still don't want to give up. Let's put recycle 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 bin bin bin. on the every road in the Bronze. Flash! Flash? What did this flash for me? You need to learn some facts. What is fact? Well, 75% of what we consume, that's recyclable. That's why we need two bins for recycling. Let's go. I'll teach you some of the facts. So you can fix your behavior. Nice. This is trash. 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 Pineapples. Trash. Plastic. Trash. Plastic again. Trash. Rope. Trash. Cardboard. Trash. This is trash. Okay. No, no, no. This is made of plastic, right? Plastic is recyclable. So you put it in the recycling bin. Okay, done. Okay. Oh, this. Trash. Uh, apples. Trash. Pineapples. Trash. Nice. Wow. Plastic. Trash. Big deal! Recycle and trash are the same thing in the problem. Well, the deal is when you put things in the trash, they go on the landfill. Sometimes they burn the landfill. That releases harmful carbon dioxide in the air, which catches heat, causing more global warming. Plus, the trash can also accumulate inside the water fields, the landfills around the world, poisoning fish and entire ecosystems. So that's how it harms the economy, because fishermen in rural areas will have nothing to eat. I do to save the earth. Well, first of all, you can stop using, uh, you can learn how to recycle like this, and second of all, you can stop using cars and all that and start using bikes like I do. So one, two, three, four, five, okay. Okay. One, two, three, and. 
and four. Done. How many items do we have in total? Sixteen. All right. How many items were in the trash? Um, four. And how many items were in the recycling bin? Um, twelve. Good. And so, what percent of the trash was there in? Uh, what percent of trash? Yeah, yeah. What percent of trash there was in? Um, okay, so let me break out some math. The second degree Hamiltonian operator what of the, the first frick? degree. Oh, 24%. Oh, get your math right. You did a really bad mistake. 25%. What, what, what? So using that, can you calculate how much was in the recycling bin? Okay, I got this. Oh, okay, 25. Okay, so the second degree Hamiltonian operator of the first degree interval of the second degree divergence of the third degree curl. Oh, 76%. God damn it. 75. Please, just get your math right. No now. matter about your math skills, thank you for learning how to recycle. Honestly, surprised that somebody from the Bronx could learn this. Oh, what part of the Bronx are you from? I'm not from the Bronx. I'm from the Oak. And that's the moment I realized why recycling is so important. Folks, here's what I learned. Our time on this earth is finite. That means if we're gonna garbage something, we better do it sustainably so that the people of the future can enjoy the same earth that we do. So next time, don't garbage, don't trash, recycle.